And good morning. It's Saturday, the 6th of May, 2017. Welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom tour. We are getting earlier. Have you noticed that? Someone was saying that the other day. You do seem to be getting earlier and earlier. Yes, we need to be brightly awake, except on Fridays, boys and girls. Except on Fridays. I'm finding Fridays a bit of a struggle now because, of course, I go to bed late on, sort of very late Friday morning, right about 3, 3.30 sort of time. And uh, I don't get up till 10 and it's rush, rush, rush. See if I have my hair cut again. Oh, yes, all ready for my impending holiday. It's time for another caravan holiday. Oh, yes. This time, I shall be going to Caster on Sea on Monday. Once again, my dear friend uh, Ronnie will be moving into the house and looking after Katie the cat. Uh, yesterday, at uh, the hairdressers, um, we're going to this new place now in Bracknell. It's only been open a few weeks. And uh, Eden Barbers it is. It's very nice, very clean, very nice and all that business. But <clears throat> he's a bit rough with the... He's a bit rough with it. I don't know if I've got a sensitive head or not. What I was noticing during my mate Ronnie's hair the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did note... Mm, 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 mm. I mean, it's almost like ch taking chunks out of my head. If I had any air, probably wouldn't be any left at all now. You know, look at that bit in the middle. Oh, stop looking at that. Don't remind me of that. He's a bit rough with those clippers. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to have to... I'll give him one more go and then I'll have to reconsider. Because it's a shame. I quite like it in there. Of course, Ronnie goes to the pretty boy, doesn't he? The pretty boy. Whose name is... Let me... Pay, I made notes of this here. Ca uh, Carlos. Carlos. Carlo, Carlo or Carlos, he he likes about, and he always gets him first. I I've gone to the older bloke three times now. Every time I've been now, this here's my quandary, right? <clears throat> so sometimes he has two or three hairdressers in. There's no, there's no gay ones. No, oh, oh, can I cut your hair? Oh, no, these are real lads, men, dear, young men. That's what we we don't want to be cut hair cut by some puff. Dear. Oh, can I cut your hair, please? Oh. Oh, what would you like? No, dear. We want real men to cut our hair in there. Dear me. That's what we want. Yes. Um. So he goes to the lad and gets cut by him. But this... Oh, God. And now and again, th three times just the other... Like that. Oh, sorry. I got a sensitive head. I'll give him one more go and then I'm going to have to reconsider. Because it's hurting me. I must have sensitive skin on the head or something like that. And he does the old, uh, you know, the flame on the ear, whoosh, whoosh, which we actually, we tried to do that because when we first started going there a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago now, uh, he didn't have the flame thing. Whoosh, whoosh. Some people are wondering what that is. Well, they got this like stick and I can describe it as a large cotton bud. OK, which he sprays with that lovely lemon spray that they spray on your head afterwards. Psst, 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 you know, oh, I love that. Spray. I've got some of that. It's a bit dear. You can get it on Amazon. Now, what's it called? Um, do you want me to get it? I don't know if I've got it. Just a moment, please. I'll see if it's in the cupboard. One moment. Just stay there a second. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Got it. Now, you can get this on Amazon and you can use it. I use it like an aftershave. I, I don't buy expensive aftershaves. Duru Limon Spray. There it is. Duru. Duru. Type it into Amazon. I don't know how much it is on Amazon. It's lovely. Aren't oh. oh, I smell fresh now. I was... When I got up this morning, I did notice... I have noticed sometimes when I get up in the morning... I leave the bedroom to have a wee. When I come back, I notice there's an odour in there. I think it's me. I think I'm starting to go off. I, I, it's, it's a bit of a... I mind you, some people in the pub sometimes. Oh, my God, they stink! Oh, God, there was one... There were, oh, no, I'm not going to say it. No, there was one... I won't tell you where it is, because cause it might identify someone. We can't be identifying smelly people, not by name. Hello, however, I will try and get a photo of them and we'll display it on the screen for you. 
Oh, there was one this week. And I don't know if they kept passing wind, but they stank. Every time I walked past this place, people were coming. What is that smelling here, Chris? Oh, I shouldn't really say it's that one over there. No. <laughs> anyway, I think I should keep this with me at all times and spray people who smell. How dare you come to my place is smelling. Change your bloody clothes, you dirty git. How dreadful. Anyway, this is the snuff. It's really nice, a lovely lemon smell. smell. And they spray that all over you. And he sprays it on the large cotton bud thing. And he goes, whoo, whoo, and the little airs in your ears, which I'm sorry, you know, those of us who are getting a tiny little bit older than others, uh, we, we, we do... Um, we do, uh, 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 he, he lights the thing and a flame appears, a fl quite a large flame. And he put, he kind of does his hand like, oh, and you can hear and smell the hairs in your ears being removed, being burnt to a cinder. And you hear the noise like that, like that. Well, before he had it, we were used to go to the hairdressers in Wokingham. Now, you remember, we don't go there anymore. We like the people in We like them very much. We like all the people who cut the hair in there. We like the manager and all that. But it went up three pounds and he didn't tell us before he cut his hair. And we thought he was taking the mick a bit with that. So that's why we, that's the only reason. And we were very happy with haircuts and everything in there. But well, I thought they were taking the mick. So we stopped going there, unfortunately. Um, and... Uh, uh, where was I going with that now? Just a moment, please. I looked at something. You see, I looked at something else. I put myself off then. That's it. And he used to do it. Well, when we went to the new one, they didn't do it. <clears throat> so after the first, he said, well, we're going to start doing that soon. OK, so after the first couple of trips, we noticed there were hairs in areas. And I said to Ron, shall we have a go ourselves at doing this? And he said, yeah, yeah, go on then. <laughs> so... I got the match, but I don't have a, like, cotton buds. Never put cotton buds in your ears, dear. Very dangerous. Very, very da Never put cotton buds in your ear. I had a terrible ear infection once with cotton buds. Oh, the pain. And it got to such a point that if you touched my ear, this pain would go straight down the side of my face. It was awful. It was like Bell's palsy. Well, I was. Dreadful. Very, very bad. Never Ever, not even for a little scratch. Now, your finger, you can use that to scratch ears. There's a reason your finger won't go further in your ear hole. It's nature's way of saying, that's it. You can't push it in any further. It's no use saying to them, deeper, deeper, heart, further, further, push it further in. You mustn't do it. Yes. Um, so I got this match and I lit it. And as I went like that, of course, the thing's gone out, hasn't it? I said, well, that's not going to work. I've got another one. <laughs> went, no, it's gone out again. And uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll get a few together. So I then got three matches together and struck them. <laughs> and they sparked into... Isn't that marvellous how matches do that? Don't you think? How you go... <laughs> and they just spark into life. What did they do in the Stone Age? How did they light, light, light fires? I mean, we, we learnt that thing in the Scouts. Cubs, do your best... We will do our best when you get sticks. And you oh, it takes forever. I feel sorry for the people in living in caves and that. Some of them do now, you know. People live in caves. I don't know why. No central heating. Dreadful. Ghastly. Um, so so we, I got the three matches. Okay, so I put my head hand there so as not to damage his other hair on his head. Which, incidentally, I shouldn't really tell you this. Actually, for where is he? He's over there somewhere, I tell her. Um, he seems to be losing his hair in the middle as well now. I can't wait. Because he takes the mick out of my age and looks all the time, my mate, you know. Oh, yes. Do you know what he calls me in the swimming pool now? Tugboat Lil. He says, when I swim up and down, it's not like, um, you know, you don't glide through the water like a dolphin or a shark. He says I'm a bit wide, so his name when he's when he's when he's when I'm in the swimming pool, he calls me Tugboat Lil. I'm not impressed with that. Don't 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 please don't give him the satisfaction of laughing. I can see you laughing. Don't do that. Tugboat Lil, he calls me. That's all right because sometimes when he goes past me, when I say he goes past me, he never goes past me. I am the strongest swimmer by far. 
I'm the strongest weather. So when I catch up with him sometimes, as he's called me Tugboat Lil, as I get closer to his leg, I just grab his leg and pull it backwards. I said, why are you doing that? We said, I'm a tugboat. I'm going to tug you. Tug, tug, tug. Who likes a good old tug in the morning? Do you? Oh, it's wonderful. Anyway, uh, so I've got the matches. I'm going, whoosh, whoosh. Oh, I just ended up burning his ear. Good. I'm pleased that happened. So don't try that. If it's any young people, children are watching at this moment. Families, millions of families and are sitting around computers and television sets everywhere, streaming with their Chrome, Chrome, what's that thing? That thing you plug in, Chrome, Chrome streamer. What's that called now? Do you know that little thing you can buy? Chrome webcast, something like that. They plug it into the back of their tellies and they watch me on a large telly. My God, I must look really fat on those. I could be double tugboat Lil, couldn't I? So we tried this thing with the matches. No, just ended up burning his ear. Didn't really work. Anyway, so the bloke up, the Eden hairdressers now, is doing that now very well. And that's no problem at all. But he does hurt my head. When he's cutting my hair, he's digging too much in a tooth. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. So that's where we went uh, yesterday to have our hair cut. Uh, while I was up there, while Ronnie was having so much conversations with Carlo. He likes Carlo. Don't you think Carlo's nice? Yes, he's all right. Yes, he's all right. He's about half your age, though, Ron. God, and what about you one at home? Have you forgotten about him? Oh, but I really love my Andy. Oh, Love, what is that love? Doesn't exist here, love. I keep telling people that. All load of old rubbish. Oh, I love they, they all say it, don't they? Oh, I love you, I love you. And 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 when they finish with you, that's it. Goodbye. Used like a piece of old meat. Terrible. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm sitting, I've finished now. He takes forever to have his hair cut, my mate. He has his hair cut, and then the beard has to be done, and all this business. Me, bzz, bzz, 10 minutes gone, I'm finished. 11 pounds, please. 13 pounds with the tip. That's good. Is it two pound tips, all right? And it don't you think it's not tight, is it? Two pounds. So he's having that done. And then, and they've got, of course, they've got the obligatory men's barber's television blaring away, dear. On the wall in this lovely address. He's done out so nice. Little special chairs for children, which consist of cars and little animals. And the kids sit on... I hate that word, kids. The children sit on there and have their hair cut. Oh, it's wonderful in there. So clean and bright. I've got some photos, which I still haven't put on the system. I keep meaning to show you. Um, and I'm sitting there, and the, the music's, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's top, top 20 music on MTV or one of those stations. Uh, and then, oh, it was awful. This bloke come on and started doing talking singing, as Barry Manilow was call it, i.e. rapping. His name? Stormzy. Stormzy. Oh, it was ghastly. It really was. There was no music in it whatsoever. It was dreadful. And he was doing that talking, you know, talking and, and, and all that. And movement. And I, I said to Carlo, who was cutting my mates, I said, is this what you lot go out and dance to now at night? And he nodded his head like that and smiled. I said, oh, it's awful. Just dreadful. At which point, Ronnie says, you was a big DJ in your day, weren't you? I said, well, that was then, dear. You know, my DJ mainly stopped around the era of Beyonce. I, I was happy DJing with Beyonce right up to Crazy in Love. When she started singing Drunk in Love, the music really started changing and I hated it. That's why I had to give it up. Dreadful. Stormzy. Have you heard Stormzy? Very popular. Very popular. Not for me. Oh, it was horrendous, this noise. I nearly had to go out and have, go and have a cup of tea at Waitrose and I was going to leave him in there and just go and drink a cup of tea in the very cool, relaxed atmosphere at Waitrose in Bracknell. <laughs> it was going and it was so loud oh well so that was our little uh, hairdressing day uh, yesterday let me see what have I read now oh, incidentally this is now as Theresa May would say welcome to this strong and stable programme United Kingdom Talk we will continue being strong and stable at all times 
We really will. Let's do some of your messages this morning. Uh, oh, there's lots of you. Good morning to Wendy. Morning, Wendy. Wendy's with us. Diane Jeb says, good morning. Love the music. Thank you, Diane. Do, 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 do. Oh, which one do you like? Because we have two pieces of music, don't we? We have the beginning bit. Do, 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 which my sister hates. Good. Good. Because next time she gets in my car, I shall have it on a loop. Just to annoy her. Just to annoy you. I told you what, my great nephew, George, says, I annoy him. Chris, you're annoying me. He's only four. I'm annoying him already. Ah, wait till you're a teenager, mate. I'll get really annoying then. <laughs> morning, Diane. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Uh, Diane, oh yeah, or, or is it the other music you like? Is it that one? Did you want to hear all the music again? I can play it again for you if you want. Oh, OK. No. All right. Uh, morning to Tanya. Hello, Tanya, darling. Rod Brown's with us this morning. Oh, there's my sister now. Have you wet the bed? No. But as you're so blooming rude, next time I stay at your house, I will wet your bed. And you can blooming well change it all. Wet the bed. Wet the bed. When's the last time I wet the bed? Come on, sis. It's a long, long time. People do wet the bed. They wet the bed when they're young and old. There's a few people watching this programme at the moment who probably wet the bed quite a lot, but that's OK. Your secret is safe with me. As a priest once said to me, it's our little secret. Uh, good morning to Craig. Good morning to Craig, who says, yes, you're getting earlier. I am getting earlier, aren't I? I have, I have noticed that. We must we must spread around the programmes a little bit more. We must spread it around. Good morning to Gustav. Gustav with a V. Gustav. Gustav with a V. He gets very upset when you don't pronounce his V's, you know. V's are very important to Gustav, who was not at the karaoke last night, I noticed. What happened? What happened last night? Gustav says, good morning, lovey. You're looking very well. Loving the new blusher. As they do say, less is more. I don't wear blusher. There's no makeup here. Do you think I should wear makeup for my programmes, eh? How long does it take to put on? I've never put makeup on in my life. Yeah, a little bit of eyeliner and all that business. There was a, there was a boy in last night. He was putting eyeliner on before he came up to sing. <laughs> Honestly, I think he was doing it for our television streaming show. That was it. Good morning, Darren Lee Wicks. Morning, Darren. You have way too much energy for this time of the day. Come on, Darren. You're not still laying in bed, are you? Dread to think what some people are doing while they're laying there in bed watching my programmes. Really do. Morning to Wayne Martin, who says, um, you need to do the ear thing with a lighter. I, went, whoosh, whoosh. I think I just end up burning people's ears. That's the trouble. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that again. Um, Diane says it's it's the first the first bit of music that she likes. Oh, yeah. do, 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 do. Isn't it lovely, that bit? I wish I knew what it was called. I wish I knew, Diane. Morning to Paul Adamson's. Uh, Paul Adamson, who's in Amsterdam. When it's spring again, I'll bring to you tulips from Amsterdam. I think Max Bygraves used to sing that. <clears throat> Max Bygraves was a very old time singer. Yes, very great, very popular with my mother. She used to love um, Max Bygraves. So last night, uh, good good night at the karaoke. Traffic not too bad last night. That was okay. Uh, it was very nice to meet Tony, who I haven't seen since I used to DJ at this place in Coventry, uh, Rainbows, which is an excellent place. I had to leave there in the end because I was it, the the drive home was doing my head in. Uh, we used to finish there at three o'clock in the morning, and I wouldn't get back here till about half past four, quarter to five, and that's going at some speed. I I, I can't lie to you. That is going at some speed. And I thought, this is just dangerous. You know, so I, I gave it up in the end. Um, uh, Now, they're open till, f I think, six o'clock in the morning. What time would I be getting back? Six. I I'm honestly, six o'clock in the morning, they're open till now, rainbows. So I have a five or six, one of the two. So I'm, gl I'm glad I came out of there. Lovely bloke running it. Uh, Terry and uh, Martin are the owners of uh, that place and Gary was the manager there and all the staff were fantastic. I loved it. Loved all the people there, but it was just too late for me. And that that was, I think really, that was the first gig I dropped for time, sort of late time. And ever since then, I've been getting rid of all the late ones. And, and the last late one is going in June. 
The last two o'clock one is going in June, so uh, that will happen. But anyway, uh, Tony used to come there, Tony, uh, who's got uh, recently married. So he brought his wife uh, down to uh, Central Station last night. And his mum and dad, uh, his dad's name was uh, Richard. I don't know what his mum's name was. I can't remember his mum's name. But they were all there last night. Tony sung a song. And uh, and his dad, Richard, sung a couple of songs. I think one of them was My Way. And now the end is near. Was it? Was that one of your songs? I can't remember now. Don't remember anyway. So it was nice to see them. And uh, also uh, there was two Carlas. Two Carlas and two of the boys from Belushi's, where I used to work in London Bridge. Now and again they turn up and it's always so nice to see the Belushi's people. It really is because we had such a good time working at Belushi's in London Bridge. We really, really did. It's, it's just fantastic. And it's always so nice uh, to see the two of those. I was surprised. Um, Car the two Carlos watched the show <clears throat> now and again. They don't message. They don't call in, but they're there. And they said, listening to the show sometimes, I think they were on a long drive the other day. I don't know if they were with us live or watching the recording, uh, but they were saying it's like listening to a friend at the end, which and that is exactly what this this is this thing I do is about. Want to be your friend at the other end. That's that's what it's about. So I'm glad that's kind of achieving it for them. Um, thank you very much for all your concerns for Katie the cat. Oh yes, if you saw the Katie update the other day, oh if you were watch if you watched on YouTube, you wouldn't have seen that. Uh, but Katie, yes, I took her to the vet on the Thursday, and um, lovely. Oh, she's such a nice person that vet. Uh, but she's not in any pain at all. She's not suffering. Her head is in a completely different place now. Uh, the vet said she'll never be the cat that she was, but as long as you're all right to keep cleaning up after her all the time and all that, then nothing else more. To be said, she said, if you want to go the other way, she said, that, then we don't judge you. That would be fine with me. Whatever you want to do is fine. I said, that's fine. I'll take her home in the bath to get and back out. She is again. Oh, yes. At the moment, she's in the garden. If it's nice and there's no rain forecast, I leave the cat in the garden because then she can wee and poo as much as she likes. Doesn't matter. I just flick it over the fence. <laughs> I do hope there's not anyone passing at the time. Do you ever do that? Chuck stuff over your fence. <laughs> Poor old cow she is. I got up this morning. No mess this morning. Well, there's wee. I don't mind the wee so much. The wee doesn't smell, apparently. Now, I mentioned this to the vet, and that's because she said that's because her kidneys aren't as good as they were when she was younger. And it's very um, diluted. The wee is. She's drinking a lot. Eating a lot. If she stops eating or drinking, I'm um, to bring her back in because that's a different story altogether. But at the moment, she she does all this business. And when you stroke her and pick her up, she, she purrs. She likes company. She does like a bit of company, you know, as she still walks round and round in the circles. I really must get one of those hamster wheels so I can generate some of my own electricity here to go along with the solar panels and stuff like that. Uh, Darren Lee says, I watch a show here from Barcelona. Barcelona. La da 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 da. Barcelona. Uh, in Barcelona, and it really is like listening to a friend. I love tuning in when I'm free. Tune in always, Darren. Recorded or live don't really make much difference, really, does it? Unless you're a caller phoning in, um, I suppose it doesn't really make any difference whether you're watching a recording or live, does it? No. Uh, Gustav says it's like listening to a friend who's done one too many dabs of speed. What's that then? <laughs> you remind me of going to FF, Gustav. I used to go to that club FF, which became Warriors. And I also went to trade as well. So I do know what you mean, dear. That was back in the 90s. I think I'm still I'm still acting on the effects of that stuff now. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Wayne, he says, I hate the first bit of music. Well, you don't like good music, do you, Wayne? Wayne, doesn't like good music. I mean, people that have been to your discos tell me that you clearly don't like good music from what you play. Is that right, lovey? <laughs> Couple of you sharing uh, today's video on your walls. Thank you very much for that. That's always uh, much appreciated. Um, you can do that just to, you know, do a, do a share thing on your wall. And that's uh, very kind as well. Uh, lovely to see the local elections. That was exciting, wasn't it? My God, almost the whole map has turned blue. 
Poor, and, and, and um, uh, well, I feel sorry for Jeremy, dear. Poor old Jeremy Corbyn. But they just don't get it, do they? They don't get it. Oh, well, I mean, it's not too much of a bad... They all come on... It just makes me die when they come over on the telly. It doesn't matter which party you're from and they've lost. Oh, well, when it's not as bad as we thought it could be. I mean, how bad do you want it to be? UKIP, is, that, that, the UKIP people, well, that's finished, isn't it? They've lost everything, everything. <laughs> I don't think they've got a single thing left, have they? Dear me, but poor old Jezza. Oh, I feel sorry for an old sturgeon up north. That's a miserable old cow, that isn't it? Oh, she's a miserable old... Uh, independence, independence. Oh, oh, go away, dear, and buy yourself an island or something, will you? Leave us alone. She's had a kick up the arse as well, hasn't she, apparently? They've lost some members up there. Virtually the entire map was turning blue. Couldn't believe it. Anyway, we'll see what happens uh, in the general elections because we need a strong and stable government or a coalition of chaos. I'm quite liking the sound of the chaos. Hey, eh? <laughs> I mean, how chaotic can it get? <laughs> I love it. I'm watching it. Sometimes I watch at these um, uh, these the, these these politicians. And who is that? Who's that one in like, Diane Abbott? Oh, she ain't got a clue, is she? What is she about? I think you need another job, love. McDonald's are always looking for people. Or Kentucky Fried Chicken. Or, um, or you could, have, I might have a job here for you, darling. I need a bit of dusting done here, actually. I think you might be better off as a cleaner than a politician, lovey. Can you just imagine calling in Di Abbott, Diane Abbott to clean your house? Right, uh, oh, um, how many tins of polish should I have? Oh, oh I can't count, can't count. Silly old bag. <laughs> Diane Abbott, oh, for Christ's sake. Another one, go away. Go on that island with Nicola Sturgeon, love. Go and set up your own little party over there, darling, and enjoy it. Ghastly people. <laughs> this is, a th thank you, Wayney. We need me in a coalition of chaos. That's what we want in our lives. Just a little bit of chaos. We don't know when everything's set out perfectly, do we? A little bit like going... I don't like to keep using the term McDonald's. But it's a bit like going to McDonald's. You know you know roughly where the straws are going to be. You know where the counters. You know what they say. Everything is the same. We want it a bit chaotic. We want to go into McDonald's one day. There's the burgers. Oh, they're selling sofas now as well. Like Audi. Have you been in Audi? Oh, wonderful shop, dear. Ghastly customers. Awful people that go in Audi. Have you been in there? Oh, my God. Whoa. I mean, keep that wallet firm. I feel like I've been pickpocketed when I'm going in there. I'm watching the people walking around in their tracksuits, you know. Who's going to try and steal my wallet first in Audi? Anyway, you go in there and it's a bit like it's chaotic in Audi and little. I gather little is the same. I don't think I've ever been in a little, but I think it's the same as I do. So you walk in, if you've never been in one, and probably most of the viewers to this show have never been in an Audi or Liddy. You're all Waitrose people, aren't you? That's what we like. Uh, so in Waitrose, you know, you're, you're walking, and on the left will be your vegetables and your fruits and stuff like that. <clears throat> Followed on the next aisle by chiller cabinets. Then there will be the bread. Uh, oh, oh, new to Waitrose shops, they have these ghastly sushi bars. All this raw fish wrapped up and stuffed in a little polished diamond. Oh, they're going mad for it. They love it. People love it. They're oh, oh, look, what shall I have today? And I'm looking at this stuff, almost throwing up, dear. Raw fish. It's not even cooked. Can't you get poisoned from that? What's that poisonous Japanese fish? The, the puffer fish. Very dangerous. If it's cooked too much or not cooked enough, you die. <laughs> is that part of the attraction to eating it? Is that what it is? You know? Anyway, so, uh, yes, you walk in. And, and then there's the bread counter there. And then, and then there's... Uh, what's after the bread counter? Then there's biscuits and crisps. Then there's... Breakfast cereals, jams, and that's how it's laid out. Audi, Audi, right, okay. Bread, breakfast cereals, electric drills. Carrots, Brussels sprouts, cheese, blankets. Radios, milk, 
cheese shoes. <laughs> it is a coalition of chaos, Audi. But we, it's quite nice to go in it. I think that's what we need. We need a coalition of chaos, but we need Teresa to run it. We need Mother Teresa to run it. We do. We can't have no politics. But they love her, dear. The, the Conservatives, they don't actually need any politics anymore. Just hand out a picture of Theresa May. Oh, yeah, we'll vote for her. They love her. I love her. It's the shoes. It's those kitten heels. I would willingly donate my cat to Theresa May to make another pair of shoes. I would love it. <laughs> so that's, that's the election. Um... Wayney says, easy, I go to Audi. Why am I not surprised at, surprised at that, Wayney? Huh? You try and nick a few wallets in there yourself, do you, lovey? Eh? Do you? Oh, I saw crime the other day. Me and my mate saw crime the other day when I was taking the cat to the vet. Oh, yes. As we were pulling round the corner, there were three police cars, Wayney. Now, what area was this? East Hampstead. So we thought, well, I wonder what that's going on down there. And as we got past the three police cars, there's a path. There is a lad being held down by three police officers and another couple standing around. A little bit like the gas people, you know, who dig up the holes. One bloke doing the work, work ten standing around. <clears throat> mustn't smoke, <laughs> mustn't smoke near gas works. And they're all smoking. <laughs> smoking away. It was a bit like that. The three police officers, two of them holding him on the floor. Like with, with, I think, a knee in his back and the, the arm up his back like that and some others gathered around and he was screaming and shouting, get off my effing back and all this, oh, you're hurting me, load of our rubbish. Well, you wouldn't be hurt if you hadn't done something wrong. He's obviously done something wrong. Maybe a burglary or selling drugs. We don't want people like that in the world, dear. Get rid of them. Cut their heads off. Send them to Isai. Ice, 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 ISIS, dear. Get rid of, that's what we want to do with these people. Send them over to Afghanistan or somewhere like that. We don't want them in the country. Thank you very much. I don't know what his name was. He was, um, he was screaming obscenities, though. Dreadful. Oh, my ears were hurting. They were, I had, I, the cat was with us as well at the time. She was distraught of the language coming out from this lad. Don't do anything wrong and it won't happen then. Good luck to the police. Thank you very much, the police force, for catching yet another little scumbag and getting them off the streets of Bracknell. Thank you very much. It's very rare that that happens around here, I have to say to you. Not here in Royal Berkshire, lovey. Not here in Royal Berkshire. Good morning to Shania joining us this morning. Good morning to Tracy Clifford. Did you try and get in on the action? I wish I had, Tracy, and I'm glad you're there, Tracy. Is my great niece with you? Is my great niece with you? I was going to save it to the end of the show, but as you're there now, Tracy, could you please go and get your great niece, my great niece, your daughter, to the computer now and let me know when she's there. Thank you very much. I'm waiting. Oh, hang on a minute. There's a 10 second delay. So I'll have to keep filling. Let me know when she's there at the computer, OK? Um, yes. So that was the dodgy people. Uh, someone caught. I wonder what he was caught for. He didn't have any shopping. He wasn't shoplifting or anything like that, you know. Wayne says, I love your local Audi, but yes, East Hampstead is rough. Rough? Rough? Well, we thought that. Now, I always thought East Hampstead. But while we were watching him, then I started looking around. Oh, dreadful people. There's one person who's painted their hat on. This is no word of a lie. I don't know if you know it, Wayne. Ah, OK. So my, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Just a moment. Let me make a note of that before I forget it. Uh, Emily, one minute. Uh, painted. Right, just a minute. Today is Emily's birthday. Now, Emily, I'll do your other birthdays at the end of the show. But this is a special one because it's my great, it's my great niece. My great niece Emily's birthday today. And I think today she is three. Is that correct? I think today Emily is three years old and she, I wish I had a pic. Oh, I'm going to get a picture. Sod it. No. Uh, can I do that? One moment, please. Let me see if I can get a picture of Emily. Right, hang on. Oh, I don't know if I can do this now. What happens if I close that? If I close that, we might go off air. I better not close that. Oh, I've got another one here. Um, let's try that. Just a moment, boys and girls. Let me see. Facebook. Oh, is it going to want my password? I can never remember my password. Can you? Are you what you like on passwords? Oh, hang on. No, there I am. Right. Okay. 
Let's get a picture up of my beautiful, stunning great niece. Right, hang on. I can show you. You want to see her, don't you? I know you want to see her. Might be a little bit messy while I'm doing this. Hang on a minute. There she is. There's my niece. And hopefully at the top of her um, thing will be a picture of of my great niece. One moment, please. Up there. Oh. Oh, look at that picture. Yeah, I've seen that before. Right, hang on. Down low to system. One moment, please. Oh, what do you want to do with it? Save it. Save as. Oh, okay. Save as Emily. Emily, videos and pictures for live show. There we go. So save that. Close that. Right. <clears throat> now, how am I going to do? Oh, I know how to do this. I, I learned something the other day. Right, hang on. Let's go to that. Nope. Um, oh. Just a second. Uh, pick. That's it. Pick. Well, one minute. One minute. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. You can't see me doing it now. I found another way to do it, you see. It's all a learning curve. Dear. It's all a learning curve. Uh, create new image. One second. Uh, my niece hasn't asked me not to show it to you, is she? Emily, I'm going to put your picture up here in a minute, darling. One second, darling. My niece hasn't said not to do it, so that must be all right. I wouldn't put it up here if I thought you didn't want me to, Trace, don't worry. My knee, oh, oh, where is she gone? Oh, there she is. One minute. All right, da, da, da. Click. OK, right, you ready for this? Are you ready to see? Are you ready to see my gorgeous little great niece? Here she comes. Here she comes. There she is. I know she's in the middle of the screen, but the, isn't she pretty? <laughs> and there she is in her little blue. I think it's called a tutu. I think it's called a tutu. Isn't she gorgeous? Look. And today, it's Emily's birthday. Today, Emily is... Uh, oh, well, I'll move it to the middle. I wonder if I can make that bigger. One minute. One minute. Uh, I'm going to make that bigger. Let me see. Transform... I've got a fit, fit to screen. Try this. Oh, no, that's OK. So that's Emily. And today it is Emily's birthday. So we need to sing happy birthday to the gorgeous, stunningly good looking in blue tutu, in blue tutu birthday. Are you ready, boys and girls? Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Emily, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Emily! <laughs> Lots of love from Great Uncle Chris, oh yes, who will buy you a new gift soon. I don't know when. Oh, it's so expensive. Happy birthday, Emily. Go on, you can go and play now. Can you go and beat up George for me? Am I annoying George this morning? I do like to annoy George. Yes. I shall find you a little something for your birthday and uh, uh, send it or something. All right, Emily. Oh, bless her. More birthdays coming up later, boys and girls. Thank you, Tracy. Coming up a little bit later, all right? Um, let's have a look here. Darren, uh, let me see... <laughs> <laughs> Gustav says, some parts of Bracknell are nice, like the motorway that runs through it. I beg your pardon, dear. The motorway. There is no motorway that runs through Bracknell. We are twixt. I believe the term is twixt. If you're an estate agent, it's twixt, isn't it? We are twixt between the M4 and M3. The M3 is a bit of a pain in the arse at the moment, dear. It is. But there's so that should be ready by the Christmas. In Christmas, they will finish the M3 works, I think. Ah, look at that. We've got um, uh, some people wishing uh, Tracy happy birthday. Tanya says, uh, sorry, Emily, happy birthday. Tanya says, happy birthday to Emily. Uh, my sister says, happy birthday to Emily. Look at them. Oh, they're all coming in. She was very excited. But we love Emily. She's mad. You think I'm mad. You wait till you meet Emily. She's even madder. And she doesn't get annoyed like George does. You annoy me, Chris. <laughs> Emily doesn't get annoyed. <laughs> 
Uh, Darren says, Bracknell, it's hardly sunning now, is it? London overspill. What, Bracknell? I don't think so, dear. You know, Sunningdale is really nice. There's a lovely church at Sunningdale I've been to a couple of times. Um, what's the name of it? Is it the Virgin Mary? Uh, no. Oh, I can't remember. One moment, please. I'll look that up for you. Sunningdale. <sighs> Although I have to say the the Waitrose in Sunningdale isn't much. It's a bit small. Yeah, the Sacred Heart Church in Sunningdale. That's a lovely church. I've been there a couple of times. It's ever so bright. But the people don't sing very much. I mean, they have a choir of about two people. That's about it. They hardly sing. And they're a bit posh in there. Yeah. Uh, I've already noticed how the posh people don't really talk to each other. Isn't that strange and mysterious? Isn't that strange and mysterious? Yes, it is. Hmm. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Darren says, Bracknell makes Reading look posh. I don't think so. Have you been to Reading, Darren? Oh, that's a dive, that is. Oh, and that one-way system does my head in. And you always get stuck by the tax office, don't you? <clears throat> well, I was hauled in there about 25 years ago. Didn't pay enough, did I? <laughs> I got this massive bill. Should have seen their faces when I paid them in cash, dear. Uh, good morning to Kim Witt. Kim's Witt's with us this morning. Morning, Kim. Uh, Wendy says, Emily is totally adorable. It's those little things in the hair, isn't it? They're like antennas. They don't miss anything, you know, those things in her hair. They're antennas, they are. Uh, Darren is wishing Emily happy birthday as well. Diane says, you're beautiful. Happy birthday, Emily. Uh, <laughs> Wayne says, I, I'm from the posh part of Reading. Really? Really? You think so? There are no posh parts of Reading, dear. Caversham's quite nice. We don't really can't count Caversham as Reading, do you? God's sake. Uh, Gustav says, I can only judge it from the recording of your doorbell, darling. Broken fridges, a caravan with no wheels, and there's someone wearing a vest with tattoos. She was pretty. <laughs> oh, sorry, is that a separate sentence? <laughs> There's no broken down caravans. I'm going on a caravan holiday next week, Gustav. You won't see me for a whole week. I'm going to Caster on Sea with nephew Gary and um and Queen and uh, Stacy and um, uh, Olivia and Harry and Evie. Thank you very much. Looking forward to my holiday next week. I'm taking fifty pounds. Do you think that will be enough? See, the beauty of caravan holidays, you ain't got to worry about going to restaurants. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh I wonder if they'll have anything that I like to eat. I'm, I'm terrible in restaurants. I, I don't like going to restaurants. Nope. I will be going to Waitrose. Actually, after the show, I'm going to Waitrose to get my shopping for next week. Thank you. And I will go there with two large bags. I could cook all my own food and not have to worry about that nasty foreign stuff that they do. Dreadful. Of course, my nephew and his what they eat anything, dear. You know, Indian, Chinese, Italian, English, cats. They eat everything. And if it moves, they eat it. Oh, dear, they carnivores. They eat dead animals. Isn't that awful? All of them. All of them. And if they make me, they're, 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 same as everyone else. Oh, let's go to the farm and see the little lambs. Oh, aren't the lambs, aren't the lambs cute? Sunday, they're eating one of them. What's all that about? Wayne says, I know you're going, you're, you're going. I'm covering you. Yes, Wayne, who's with us today, will be doing the karaoke on Monday. And he was quite popular last time. He was quite popular. They they do, but when when the funny thing is when you've got someone covering you, when you come back, the people tell you they give you an exact description of how the other people do the did how the other person did the karaoke in comparison to mine. And they they were a little bit confused, Wayney, how you um uh, uh start a song immediately after you've called someone's name and then roll it back again to the beginning when they got on the song. That confused them. Please don't confuse my millions of millions of viewers, dear. Yes. Are you blushing, Wayney? Bit difficult to see under that bad suntan of yours, lovey. <laughs> Thank you, Wayney. Yeah, I'll tell you what I've had. <clears throat> a car insurance quote. Now, so far, we've only got the renewal. Right? I couldn't believe it. 
AXA Insurance. They're the ones I was with last time. And they've sent me a new quote, £739. Are you for real? £739 insurance they've sent me as a quote. Click here to renew your quote. I don't think so, darling. I shall be doing a comparison on that. So remember that figure, £739. They've quoted me for my car insurance, which I don't know why that's so high. I really don't. Dreadful. Anyway, I shall be doing a car comparison uh, thing. So, um... I'll let you know. I'll let you know what I get on that. That's a bit steep, isn't it? Seven hundred and thirty-nine. It's never been anywhere near that. I think the most it's been is about four hundred and fifty, something like that. Shocking, shocking. That's AXA Insurance. Make a note of that, darlings. All right. Uh, good. Wayne says I thought you was with Saga. I don't think so, dear. Don't think so. And we talked about speeding earlier, weren't we? Well, be careful if you go abroad. Well, you know the speeding um, fines have changed here now, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, you're now charged as a percentage of your weekly wage. That's what you... Oh, do you want a phone number? You, if you want to call it, let's open the phone lines for a while, just in case anyone, any sad person there, you know, sad, sitting there all on your own, want a bit of a chat? Well, there's a phone number for you to call now. Look at that. 20 3477 if you want to give us a call this morning. If you want to just sit there and listen, I'm fine with that as well. We don't beg for calls, dear. Not like some of them on radio. So have you heard them? Please call me. Oh, please. Please. And there's some people that you just don't want to ring, like that ghastly James O'Brien on LBC. Any awful, and he's such a miserable, boring voice. He's a father. Christ knows how, how happy his kids are. All he does is moan, and we don't like people that just keep moaning all the time, do we? We really don't. Anyway, so tomorrow, if you're driving in foreign places, okay, you could be facing six hundred and forty pounds speeding fines under shock new laws in Brussels. This is with today's Super Soraway Daily Express. Oh yes, uh, yes. From tomorrow, British motorists could face huge fines, huge, very, very large fines, huge fines um, uh, of up to six hundred and forty pounds if they're caught speeding in Europe. UK drivers who are caught by speed cameras. Exceeding the speed limit in European countries could face up to £640 in fines in harsh new plans. Harsh new plans. Is this anything to do with that, with that, with that drunkard junker, Mr. Junker? It's not Junker. It's got a J in it. It's Junker. What sort of name is that anyway? Any ugly? Mr. Junker, don't you think? He sits there with those glasses. He's another miserable bastard as well, isn't he? Go away, Mr. Junker. Yeah, you can go on that island with Nicola Sturgeon. Who's the other one I said? Oh, yeah. Diane Abbott, Mr. Junker, Tony Blair, all you lot. Go on your own little island. Go and buy a little island. You'll all be happy there. You can just all row amongst yourselves all the time. Go away, Mr. Junker. He's terrified at losing his job, isn't he? He's terrified. How much does he get? How much does that bloke get? Is this anything to do with him? So be very wary of that if you're speeding abroad. Oh, yes. There's another little article here, which I've just found. Um, driving laws you probably didn't know, but you should be aware of to avoid getting fined. Now, I didn't know any of these. Uh, paying for a meal at a drive through with your smartphone could see you land a fine. Did you know that? Driving without shoes, although a common... Oh, hang on a minute. Why is that picture changed? Although a common myth, it is not illegal to drive barefoot if you are able to. Did you know that? I didn't know that. What else have we got here? Using a mobile phone, it's illegal to drive or be in the car with the engine on. So lots of things there. Oh, I'll have to have another look at those at another point, boys and girls. Yes. Good. What else have we got here? Um... What's the time? Oh, it's 20 past 10. I've got to get down to the shops, actually. Ah, oh, now this is nice. Now this is nice. I, you know, it's one. this is one of those stories <coughs> that you think is going to end badly, but it doesn't. This is in this morning's uh, Daily Mail. Um, Br Brie Elizabeth, 28, grew up in a small village in the English countryside. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. In an English country garden. 
uh, just a few kilometres. Kilo kilometres, dear? No, mile. This is the Daily Mail, isn't it? Why are they talking in kilometres? What are they? Miles, dear, miles. Just a few miles from her now 31-year-old fiancé, Matthew Benfall. But despite their close proximity, Bree didn't see Matt until she was 16. I saw Matthew walk down the corridor at school with his blue eyes and bulgy... Sorry, not bulgy, uh, burgundy, burgundy. With his blue eyes and bold burgundy leather jacket. He did... Why is he wearing a dead animal? Oh. Oh dear. Anyway, he didn't know who I was, but to little Bree, he was a crush with no name. The unknown fit guy. I think that's me. An unknown fit guy. What do you reckon? Please, I need to be further known. <laughs> even though, hang on, I made, made a note. Uh, even though the 28-year-old rarely saw him, her heart beat faster every time he was in the same room, but she never spoke to him. Oh, I've got hundreds of people like that. You know, I see them walk into a place and like, oh, he's so nice. And I can't do anything about it because I'm frightened. I'll be turned down again and again. I turned down three times last night. Three times. Even though the 28-year-old really saw him, uh, her heart beat faster every time he was in the same room. But she never spoke to him. Anyway, um, I think they moved. They moved. He moved to Australia. And eventually they met up. And got married. Isn't that nice? I knew I was going to marry him, the story says at the top there, before I met him. Woman 28 travels across the world to meet man 31 for the first time at Sydney Airport. And now they're engaged. Isn't it nice? Just a summary there. After featuring on TV show, Matthew saw Brie and added her on Facebook and the pair began chatting. Isn't that nice? Three years later, Matt proposed at Sydney International Airport, the same airport that they met each other. What a lovely story. I'm actually finding it difficult to work out the two different stories there. So he moved there years later and then they met up. Isn't that nice? I thought it was going to be one of those stories where... Um, someone goes to the airport after sending loads and loads of money and they don't turn up. I mean, that's just mad. You see those stories on the telly, don't you? Usually, one of the parties will be quite out. No, not necessarily, actually. I've seen sort of middle-aged, sort of my age. Um, they they start talking to someone on the internet. I say, oh, can you send some money? I'll get a plane ticket over. And they send money and money and money. And then they go to the airport. No one there. No one, only the sniffer dogs. <laughs> like that, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you, Wayney. Thank you for reminding me there. I forgot about telling you, I was sort of telling you about in East Hampstead. We'll wrap up after this, okay? I was telling you about that uh, house in East Hampstead. So we're driving after watching the incident of the boy, young man, being held down and beaten. But that's what needs to happen to these people. There's too much of this namby pamby and going around. Oh, 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 they've committed offence. Oh, you need to talk to them to understand why they did it. No, you don't. They need to be beaten. Beat them down. Beat them. Dragged into the road and beaten in front of large groups of school children so they don't do the same thing. Here is someone who stole some toothpaste from Waitrose. And no, 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 not beaten by the police. The police would drag him. They should be attached to the back of the police car and dragged at slow speed to the back of Waitrose, right, where customers, a bell will go off in Waitrose. A bell will go off in Waitrose and all the customers then go outside and they have turns in beating the person that has stolen from Waitrose. Like that. Not to death. Not to I do have a heart, you know. Not to death. But within about three inches of his life. Any more than that is greedy. Six inches. Six to within six inches of his life. That's how they should be beaten outside Waitrose. And to add to the problems, we will employ Diane Abbott. Nicola Sturgeon and Tony Blair to keep shouting at him about Europe. <laughs> or her. Or her. We can't be sexists on this programme. There's just as much chance of it being a woman or a man on that floor being beaten by the Waitrose customers and staff. Led by the lovely Linda, who works in customer services, and Michelle, who's always doing her nails. 
Oh, hello, Chris. How are you? Oh, she hasn't been in for a while. Uh, I don't think I don't think Michelle is very well. I haven't seen her for a couple of visits. I'm concerned. I must take in a card and some flowers. Anyway, so we go back to the painted house. So I'm, we're driving back. And honestly, we've gone past this house and they've painted the house pink. Not only have they painted the house pink, the Christmas lights are still... I joke you not. The Chris, OK, they don't turn them on now. But nevertheless, the Christmas lights are still up on the front of the pink house. Pink! Surely someone would have complained about that. I'm always complaining about my neighbours. Oh, yes. Anonymously, of course. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Is that Bracknell Council? Yes, yes. Yes, it's, it's number, number, number. Yes, that number. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, well, I've just seen them attaching wires into the street lamp outside. I don't usually like to tell people, but I just think it's wrong. Could you send a man out, please? Thank you very much. Next day, next day. Oh, hello. Yes, it's number. So yes, yes, that number. Yes, yes. Yes, they've moved their fence out. Well, I don't know. I mean, I thought I'd just check because I don't want people stealing land from the council. They've moved the fence out. It's just that's terrible, dear. Terrible. Thank you. Oh, yes, we must report our neighbours at regular intervals. Anyway, surely someone has reported them painting their house pink. It's not Barbados, dear. Have you been to the Caribbean? Oh, wonderful. See, it works there. Beautiful little houses, generally wooden they are in Barbados. Uh, St. Lucia, I've been to Barbados. Jamaica, oh, Jamaica, I've been to Jamaica as well. Uh, although, sort of just to the shops and back, you know, they let you off the boat. It's not really, really Jamaica, is it? You know, you've just gone to the tourist bit. But Barbados, St. Lucia, I've been there. Um, and, and they paint the houses really bright, beautiful colours. Oh, I love it. And why do the ladies dress so beautifully in Caribbean countries? And here... Fat things with crop tops and tiny little shorts. What do they look like, dear? Oh, God. Again, people walking around the town centre sometimes in Reading. Not Blacknell. We don't have that in Blacknell. You go to Barbados, St. Lucia. There's these beautiful women dressed, beautiful clothes, all nice colours and all that. Over here, nightclubs tonight. There there be. All this fat hanging out of crop tops, you know. Shoes and, and leather thigh length boots going up there. Tiny little skirts. What do you look like? Maybe, maybe people will get a sort of inspiration from Theresa May and start dressing nicely with proper shoes, dear. Nice dresses, things like that. Barbados, that's what we need. We need the people on Barbados, the women of Barbados to replace our own women over here because don't, they don't know how to dress over here. They don't. It's a little bit like the blokes in the swimming pool, isn't it? When do you, where do you see the fit blokes with their little speedos? You don't. It's only the fat, balding, middle-aged men that wear speedos. And what do they look like? My age and my shape. They squeeze into the tiniest pair of speedos and they think it looks nice. How can you think it looks nice? I look in the mirror at myself when I'm fully clothed and that don't look nice. How can it look nice, your middle-aged, fat, bald man wearing Speedos or cycling shorts? That's the other one they wear. <laughs> Dreadful people. Good morning to John Springate this morning who's just joined us. Um... Oh, only one more message there. Is that right? Right. OK, so we'll uh, disappear now, I think, boys and girls. Let's do... Oh, what, uh, is anyone getting a... Um, I'm having this problem with my computer. I did a, a Windows update the other day. And ever since then, it just keeps saying update and restart all the time. Update ever so... You know, not it doesn't come on. But when I close the computer down, it will say to me, update and restart or shut down or update or whatever update and shut down, or it will say shut down, or update and restart, and I've got the choice of those. But it, usually you do it, and then that, that disappears. But it's still doing it like a week later, update and restart all the time. Is that a problem? 
I don't know what that is. Uh, Louise and Karen says, someone's been horsing around you, froze. Must be you, I reckon, darling. I can see myself all right here. I think. <laughs> As the synchronisation got out, it was probably a good time to go then. Let's go, uh, my, my, my mouth and words might not be coming out at the same time. John says, buy a Mac. Oh, don't, John. The Mac people are always going on at me to buy a Mac. Let's do today's birthday, then, boys and girls. Uh, happy birthday today to my good old friend, um, uh, Alton Andrews. It's Alton Andrews' birthday today. I was on a radio station in London with Alton Andrews at Liberty Radio back in 1999-2000. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Alton. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, and hello to your missus as well, OK? Uh, Paris! Is 22 today. Hello, Paris. Daughter of my very good friend, Sharon. Happy birthday, Paris. 22 today. Happy birthday, darling. OK. Floyd. Floyd this morning is 37 years old. Happy birthday to Floyd. Uh, Steve Coldham. 33 years old today. I went to his wedding. Uh, that must be a few years ago, Steve, now, was it? Down in Fulham. Uh, Fulham, sort of Putney, Fulham, wasn't it? Happy birthday, uh, Steve. Dominic Moore. Hello, Dominic. I work with him in Reflex in Putney and in Heaven as well, which is in London. Happy birthday, Dominic. And Neil... Um, oh, what's wrong with that? There's something on the screen there. Neil Henrike, I think it is, is 70. Nell? Nell Henrike is 17 years old today. So happy birthday to you all. And, of course, uh, my great niece, Emily. Here comes the song. <laughs> To you. Why have I done that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Alton, Paris, Floyd, Stephen, Dominic, Nell, and Emily. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Have a wonderful day. Uh, being a Saturday night, I'll be DJing tonight. I'll be doing some a little bit of DJing, and uh, we've got cabaret tonight at Central Station with Dave Lynn. Now, Dave Lynn uh, has been uh, on the television and in the film Beautiful Thing. He's a wonderful cabaret artist, been going for years, top professional uh, cabaret artist. So that's at Central Station tonight, cabaret with Dave Lynn and uh, me on the music. Enjoy your Saturday, boys and girls. Oh, it's time for my pills, isn't it? Why else have I got? I've got something else. I've got and to get my Waitrose shopping ready for my holiday. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. I might be a bit pushed for time tomorrow, but we'll see how it goes, all right? Thank you very much for watching and listening, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.